Hi, welcome to Gilboy's YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to very quickly strip and remove a dark finish and make it a little bit lighter. Um, what I've got here is two ash tabletops and they're veneered ash uh, that have been stained to a darker colour. I'm going to strip that off to reveal the lighter ash underneath, hopefully, which will seal and wax finish. And just one little tip about trying to, how you sort of find out whether you've got a veneered table, how to, to know whether you've got a veneered table, is, so here's the second one. In fact, should I show this to, to Ian up there? So you can see that's a, a coloured dark table here. And can you make out the lengths of grain here? You can see these matched areas of grain. If I lift it up, can you still see them there? You can't. It's a completely different wood and a completely different veneer. And that is a clear sign that this is a veneered table. Because if it was solid, you'd see the same pattern or nearly the same pattern going from the top here the right way through to the back. So this is probably MDF. I'm fairly sure it's MDF in here or some sort of fibre board. Anyhow, so we're going to be careful not to sand as we go through this, but let's get on with the stripping and reveal that lovely ash that's, that's under here. Um, let's get on. So the materials we're going to use for this stripping of the tables are, and I'll go through them really quickly, is some water-based paint stripper. Some disposable gloves, or actually they're kitchen gloves, not disposable ones. And the reason we're using these is because we're going to be using this coarse wire wool. I'll talk to Ian up there. There's some coarse wire wool. And be careful not to tear this, but to cut it. Cutting it is much easier than tearing it because it will cut into your hands because it's like cheese wire. Um, once we've stripped it, oh, when we're stripping it, we're going to use this paint tray, uh, this decorator's tray. Uh, that's for the excess waste material that's gonna come off of the table and that's gonna be scraped off using this. This is a cabinet scrape. You can use a decorator's scrape if you like, so you don't have to buy one of these. Once we've cleaned it all back, we're gonna sandpaper the top. We're gonna use some 120 grit sandpaper, which I'm going to use this block and this is just a piece of wood with a bit of carpet attached to it so I can shape it around the block and I can sand the surface. This is a little quirking stick which I'm going to use to get the excess material from around the edges of the table which is less damaging than a metal scrape. Some 180 grit and 320 grit sandpaper for going through the grades as we go along some soft wire wool for applying the wax, and some pure cotton buffing cloth. Right, I think I've got everything. Oh, I didn't mention this bit here. So we're gonna seal it up. Once we go to the ceiling, we're gonna seal it up with some hard wax oil. Just a very light coat of hard wax oil. You could use another material, another product, but I quite like using hard wax oils, they're really quick. Right, let's get off. So this is a water-based stripper. I'm just going to I might pour a bit on. I'm not going to slap it around. As I say in all the videos, don't slap the stripper around.
can see how quickly that reacted with that varnish that's on here and it's already started to lift that old varnish away. You can see areas here. I'm going to give it one more application of the, of the stripper. Again, just moving it around with the brush. Okay, I think we've got enough stripper on there for that first attempt at stripping away the varnish. Whilst I'm here, I often get asked why we use stripper and why not just go into sanding, just sanding the surface. This is a lot quicker and a lot safer way of doing it rather than sanding. Sanding will take you a long time. You'll clog up the sandpaper a lot by using sandpaper. And also this is a veneered surface that we, we're stripping here. So we have to be careful, whereas the stripper will just take off the varnish and leave the wood surface. It's a much better way of refinishing rather than just going straight in and heavily sanding. Right, okay. I'm just gonna pop my gloves on. Okay, so that was the first strip. I've just coated up the edges here with the second um, application of the stripper. I'm gonna use this coarse wire wool. Now you can see that happened quite quickly. Um, it might not happen that quickly for you. Just test the surface. Finishes are different, so it depends how easily they absorb the stripper. I'm just teasing open the coarse wire wool. Now this tool I'm going to use here is just a square piece of waste wood which I've cut at an angle just so I can get into the corners of rebates. Um, it's safer than using the cabinet scrape or any metal because what tends to happen when you're using a metal scrape is you slide down the scythe and it moves and it scratches across the surface. Whereas with wood, and that's not going to make any damage, it won't hurt the, the, the finish. So I've gone over that three times. I'm going to give it another go actually because there's some stubborn areas of varnish on the edges, plus I can't see it. So I've fixed the table down so it makes it easy for me to work on. 
Um, but what I'll do is I'll just strip around the edges and then scrub it dry again. As you saw me just do that, I scrub the surface dry with the wire wool. Um, that's really important that you try and do it as much as possible. I know it's difficult sometimes with water-based ones, but you want to cleanly strip it uh, before doing in the next process to make sure all of the old finish has been removed. It's all got to go. So there we have it. There is a strip top. Actually, I've put probably four applications or more and spot applied the stripper where there were some stubborn areas of old finish that wouldn't come off and then scrubbed it hard with the wire wool. But I think we're pretty much stripped there. Looks like it. I'll go over and have a quick look. But we're ready for the next process. And so I clean the area here which will be just sanding. Okay. Okay, so we're at the stage now we're ready to start sanding, but just before we do, I just want to talk about using steel wool and water-based strippers on an oak surface. Don't be tempted to use um, steel wool and water-based strippers on oak. There is a danger that you could end up with little burn marks on the surface if you don't get all the steel wool off, the little remnants of steel wool, if they remain on the surface, there's a chance you get little burn areas on the top, little dots all over it. So use um, a, a green squeegee or a scrubber to get rid of the uh, waste material. Um, you know, there's kitchen things, um, use one of those. So apart from that, you'll be fine, but scrubbing it dry is important. And you can see I vacuumed off the surface to get rid of any dust and dirt, other contaminants that might be there. And it's always good to keep a clean work environment like that. Okay, let's move on to the sanding. So the sanding, homemade block with a bit of carpet on there and some 120 grit sandpaper, garnet paper. And I'll wrap it around the block I'm going to start sanding in the direction of the grain. Okay, so you've watched me hand sand this. You don't have to hand sand this if you don't want to. Just be aware that if you do use a mechanical sander, that this is a veneer. Uh, it might not be a veneer on yours, just crack on with a mechanical sander. But um, just be aware because you don't want to sand through. So I've just gone over this by hand with the 120 grit. I'm going to vacuum this off and then I'm going to wash over the surface. So let's vacuum this off. Now I'm just going to wash over the surface of the table with a little bit of methylated spirits. Again, easy for me to say. What I meant to say was methylated spirits. Um, this is purely for me to be able to see the surface. And it's quite good practice when you're refinishing to do this. It allows you to see if you've missed anywhere, any imperfections and methylated spirits 
evaporates away so quickly that it doesn't interfere with your refinishing process. It also allows me to see the colour of the surface. Because this is what it will look like when it's got a finish on there or very close to. So it gives you a good idea of the finished colour. And this is the point where you make a decision when you think, actually, I want to stain this and make it darker or colour it somewhere at some point. This is the point where you do it, not later on. This is an extremely well ventilated room, so there's no problem with the, with the meths evaporating. And we're all alcoholics in here, so it's fine. <laughs> well, he is. <laughs> um, now, there is a big scratch here on the surface. Uh, I don't know if Ian up there, up from a high, can zoom in on that. Can you zoom in? So that, if I put my finger along there, maybe, I don't know if you can see that, ish. There is a, there is a dark scratch there. I'm not gonna touch that. Um, it's, the, our customer actually is a, is a pub, it's a restaurant table, and they want this sort of natural rustic look rather than that horrible sort of dark varnish look. Um, so scratches, marks, dings and dents are all part of the character of the table. We want to keep it light. So I'm going to leave that. Now I just want to go over the surface with some 180 grit sandpaper. The methylated spirits has gone on there. It's just ever so slightly raised the grain. I'm going to knock it back just to finally make it exactly the way I want it to be ready for the finishing preparation, uh, finishing process. Preparation, see, it was on my mind because preparation is key. It's the most important thing when it comes to refinishing. So this is foam-backed sandpaper, 180 grit. Again, I'm going to use my block. I'm just going to quickly go over the surface just to denib it and just checking all the time that it's, that it's okay. Okay, so we're ready to seal the surface. Now, like I just said, this is going to go into a pub. So it's going to be used a lot and it's going to be constantly cleaned. So just applying a wax finish on this isn't going to do much good, really. That wax finish will go quite quickly because it's been constantly scrubbed. It will look nice, but practically, it's not so good in a pub environment. So I'm going to seal it with a hard wax oil, just probably one application, very light. Let that dry, then lightly flick it back and wax it and it's finished. A really quick way of stripping and refinishing. Right, stop touching stuff, right. So I have in here some natural hard wax oil, which is a blend of oils and waxes which I really do quite like when we're doing these sorts of jobs. Um, it's easy for you at home watching to use this as opposed to a tongue oil or a teak oil or a Danish oil. These oils dry quickly and they're really hard wearing. So hard wax oils, I, and I think they're brilliant. Um, so we're gonna put one application on here. I'm going to apply it with our pure cotton open weave cotton buffing cloths, well they're multi-purpose cloths, to be honest with you. We use these in the workshop for staining, grain filling, buffing waxes, and applying um, hard wax swords. Also I use it as a fad. I make fads out of these for French polishing. It's, uh, 
It's a great cloth. Right, we don't want that much. They come from us in 120, no, 60 centimetre lengths, uh, 120 centimetres in total. In fact, there often is a lot more than that. It's not lint free. I'm just going to make, I'm just going to shape it. Into a, like a little pear shape. I'll show you again. Look, I'm just folding the corners. That's what I'm doing, just folding the corners in, tucking under. It sort of makes it into a nice little pad here. Fine. I'm not being too generous with the hard wax oil. I want to put the least on as possible, the least amount on as possible. Over applying it would just make it look a little bit messy and retard the drying time. Also, you can see now what I was saying about the methylated spirits. You can see you can see how it looked when I put the meths on. This is how it looks when you put the hard wax oil on. There we have it, sealed. I can leave that now for probably overnight. We'll come back and wax polish it and it's done. You can, if you want to, give it another coat of hard wax oil. You can wax it and then put hard wax all over the top. They both combine really, really well. So you don't have to stop at one coat. It could be two, three coats up to you. Okay, so it's the next morning. Um, you can hear it's, it's quite dry. Um, so at this point, let me just put my cup of coffee down. Um, at this point, we could sand this back ever so lightly and give it another coat of hard wax oil, uh, which again would mean waiting a further day. Now, my customer for this is a pub, is a restaurant. Um, it's actually the, the Tally Ho in Little Henson, not too far away from us here. Um, they want the table back. So what I'm going to do is give this a coat of our antique gold. I could use the Pure, which is a clear polish on here. Um, 
But what I want to do is highlight the grain a little and the antique will just pick up the darker areas of the grain and give contrast to the other areas where the wax won't take quite as much. So it just gives a bit of life to the tabletop. Um, so let's crack on. I'm going to use our four zero fine wire wool. It's as soft as cotton wool. You don't have to apply wax polish with wire wool. It's not a rule, but it's a nice way of doing it and it won't scratch the surface. Oh, one other thing, just before I start doing the wax polishing, just thought, you can hear it's apps, just ever so slightly rough texture to the surface. I'm just gonna very lightly denib it with some 320 grit foam back paper. I'll show that to Ian up there. Um, just to take the top off of it. So I've just rubbed faces together and that just knocks off the edge off of the paper a little bit. I'm gonna put it in my hand like so, because it's a nice easy way of sanding. I'm gonna put my hand behind my back because it gives me balance because I want to sand straight. It. There was hardly any pressure on there, just the weight of my hand and my arm on it, nothing more than that. Right, back to the waxing. Now our waxes are quite stiff compared to any other waxes much stiffer because there's a lot more wax in there but that does mean it lasts a lot longer so all those lovely natural waxes that are in here so I've charged my wire wool and I'm not going to dab the surface don't dab the surface with the wax so you can distribute it you possibly end up with little ring marks so just start at one side I'm going to work my way down the table. Okay, so that took a few minutes. Um, the wax really was sort of pulled into the finish there because it's only had a sealer coat. We're gonna leave that for 20 minutes now and give it a buff. I already can see that it's made a difference to the grain. Um, and anyway, we'll come back in a second and unbuff it. Okay, so we've waited 20 minutes. Now it's the, the time to buff. Um, again, using our pure cotton open weave buffing cloth. I'm just gonna shape it loosely into a soft pad. It's not limp free, I know I keep on saying that. And I'm just gonna buff with the grain. got a lovely natural feel to the finish. You can still feel the grain quite smooth. There's a soft satin finish. It's not a gloss. That's perfect. Now the grain started to pop out. It hasn't really changed the colour. Just give it a little bit of warmth. Lovely. Now like I said before, you can overcoat this if you want to with some more hard wax soil. Just go straight over the top and do the same again if you wanted to.
subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button down in the right hand corner of your screen. And once you've done that, hit the little bell notification icon and you'll be notified every time we upload a new video to YouTube. Thank you.